got it out. Okay, I found my light. Okay, I had started a story about my trip to Russia a while back, and I want to resume it. I was invited to Russia to talk at a convention, Languages of Science, Languages of Art. My, I brought my husband with me, he knows karate, and we were each assigned a KGB agent. Because you can't just go to Russia, you have to be invited, or you can go part of a tour group, and you're always accompanied by a KGB agent. My agent was Natasha, and my husband's was Igor. Igor was the gentleman who had invited me to come and talk. Okay, so I had come out from working with Natasha, who was translating my paper into Russian. And instead of Igor, my husband was sitting there singing songs with this short but very wiry guy with swollen knuckles and lots of calluses and a very harsh kind of face and blonde hair that stuck up. And the kind of guy that any woman would cross the street, especially at night, if she saw him, bad news. And they were singing Spanish songs. So he invited us to come to his campsite because I asked him where he was staying. He said he was staying at a campsite. And so when he invited us to come by that evening, I said, no thank you, as most women would. And uh, so then when Guillermo and I went off, Guillermo said, oh, he's an, uh, what's that, ultrasound technician? Maybe I'm a word wrong, but I said, he is not. I have a friend who had that job, and what they do is they help pregnant women. He, he's not that at all. And my husband said, well, that's true. He has the kind of fist that karate fighters have with the big knuckles because they've been hit so often. <sighs> okay. And so, all right, so I decided later that evening, at about 11.30, that's when it was sunset, because we were that far north, to take a walk up the street. So my husband and I go walking up the street, and I'm looking all around. Um, uh, there's the convention center and some buildings and the forest. And I'm looking around, and the reason why I wanted to go is I wanted to see if there was a campsite. There was no campsite. Maybe a hole the size for two in the woods, but definitely no campsite. Okay. So the next day at lunch, um, lots of dignitaries were there. The guy who, the scientist in charge who had started Sputnik, was there. The guy who was in charge of the Skylab, was there and they were there with their families. And one of them had this teenage son about 15 years old and the boy had a big cast in his arm. And he's carrying this tray full of heavy dishes with his lunch. And I said, Guillermo, the kid shouldn't be carrying that tray. He's got a broken arm. So Guillermo went over and he took the tray from the child and the kid held on to it fiercely. And it strikes me now, maybe he's used to being bullied and he held on tightly so he wouldn't lose his lunch. Um, but he let go suddenly and I'm thinking, ooh, maybe his arm hurt. But Guillermo asked him where he wanted to sit. The kid pointed, and Guillermo put his lunch tray down there for him and then came back to me. And uh, so the next day uh, was my talk. It went well. And I had all my beautiful sentences. And they told me to stop that, that I should just not read my paper and my precious darlings, but just tell the talk. So I told the talk. Um, but later we saw Igor, and he was very happy um, because it had gone, they felt it had gone well and Igor had chosen the, wrong, the correct person to, to ask to come. So this was terrific. I guess he didn't have to die. So, okay, so we, um, uh, I forget exactly what happened, but my husband told me that he was informed that now that my talk was over, the convention was over for us. But I was going to find more days. Well, but I'm told it's over for us and we're leaving tomorrow. Okay, so then we pack up. And the next day we had some time, so we went and looked around the village. And when we came back, this French woman came to our room and asked us if we were ready to go. Now she had not been at the convention, we had never seen her before. And she asked us in French, we're in Russia, she asked us in French if we were ready to go. And I studied French in high school, so I managed to understand her. But I kept confusing my little bit of Spanish with my French, because I lived in Miami for 30 years. So, but I managed to tell her, yes, we're ready to go. And then she disappeared and we never saw her again. And so we dragged our luggage up to where we're supposed to go. And the guy with the knuckles was there. And Igor asked the guy with the knuckles uh, if he would go buy them some cigarettes. So Igor gave him some money and the guy ran off very happily. So then they filled the bus. So it wasn't a bus, it was a van, a big old van. And First, uh, first they took a rolled up carpet, a huge carpet, and they carried it inside and they put it in the aisle on the floor of the van. And then the scientists all got on, 
there was a hierarchy, so they and their families got on first. And then we, and then we got on, and we drove off, we were driven off to Moscow. Theoretically, we thought maybe where we would be safe, a graduate student who was terrified had been ordered that he would show us to our accommodations in Moscow. And then what happens after that? I, am I, how, am I, how am I doing on the time? Yeah, you're, yeah, I was literally just giving you away. Oh, I'm still good. Okay. No, no, no. I mean, you're, you're past five minutes. Oh, I'm, okay. Thank you very much.